I had a request to go through the thought process in creating this image. Now I'm not going to go layer through layer through it, but I, I do want to explain how I arrive at the composition and some of the issues that you face when, when doing something like this. The base image was shot in studio and it, I really didn't intend to have a composite. I mean, I didn't shoot it with that in mind. So this is, let me turn the mask off. This is the, uh, the base image, or at least part of it. I just used a marquee tool and selected a portion of the image. Now it's also been scaled to the background, so and I'm not going to unscale it. But when I was messing around with it, I know, you know, I had the base image, I did a treatment in black and white, actually a, a sepia tone of black and white. And I started messing around with it and I found two textures that I liked a lot. It was this one, which is, is, has kind of a canvas feel to it, and then um, this one, which is kind of a paper texture. And I like, I like the combination of the images. Um, this one is in soft light mode and uh, blending mode. And, this is just the base. So I applied it to the image. Actually, I probably applied both of them in soft light. And you know, it, it was still kind of lacking. So I started experimenting. The edges here kind of reminded me of a woodsy scene, that of the fact that she's wearing a, a crown of twigs and leaves. So then I decided on um, using a background rather than trying to place individual elements. And I, I looked around and finally leafed through some of the stuff that I had and I had this image of, let me turn these off, of Kong Abbey, this one right here. And so I decided to use that. It had basically what I wanted. And, and when I looked for a background to place like this, I'm really looking for three things. I'm looking for you know, does it fit in with the overall theme, obviously. But then I'm looking at the light, and I'm looking at any compositional elements. Like there are, there's a foreground element here that I, I felt was needed to kind of pull the viewer into the image. So the light, again, she was shot on a, on a psych wall, which had significant wrap. So she had to have a scene in which there was some backlighting, and you can see that right in through here. So I, uh, I placed her in the scene and scaled her to what I wanted. And that, that's kind of the, you know, just the basis of it. The, the next two challenges really are to do what's probably the most difficult in a, in a composite, and that is to get the light right and to, you know, get any shadow detail in, which I guess is a component of light. And, and there's color, so. You know, light and color are your real challenges. So I, I try to tackle color first, and color has three components. It has luminosity, it has hue, and it has saturation. And I picked this up from Aaron Nace, who I want to pimp his uh, website. It's flern, P-H-L-E-A-R-N, dot com. And uh, Aaron's got some very, he's very good at Photoshop and has got some very good techniques. And one of the techniques that he uses is he creates this group that you see here uh, that provides check layers. So the difference between a really good composite and one that doesn't look realistic, I, I think color is probably, you know, there's color and there's light, but I think color is probably the hardest to nail down. So as an aid, and I don't use, I'll be honest with you, I don't use all of this. I really just use the bottom three layers. It's very simple. It's a, a channel mixer layer to create a black and white image, and you can, there's a, you know, you can just desaturate it. There's a lot of ways to do this. But really this, the, the purpose of, this, of these check layers is to give you, is to eliminate two of the three variables in color. So here I'm eliminating hue and saturation, and all we're doing is looking at uh, luminosity. And so, you know, if it looks good in black and white, it's, it's you know, you've got the luminosity, luminosity line right. 
trouble talking. And the same with these with these other two layers. They're they're just methods for, and I'll let him explain how he uses it. But it, it just helps blending two different or more than two if you have more than two different images together so that they look consistent. And um, I spent most of my time doing that. Um, you know, Natalie's got a lot of layers here. Actually, and you may not even notice them; they're very subtle. But uh, these layers here control what we just talked about. The, the curves layer here, here it controls luminosity. This is a saturation and this is a hue. And then I added, I started working, once I got that, you start working on light. Now the light is actually coming from this direction, right here, shining on these trees. Now, I, I, actually it could be coming from this direction, but in, in my world I'm creating here, I want it to come from this direction to explain the front lighting on her. So to do that, I, I did two things. One, I added light right here. Pretty subtle, let me flip it on and off. So I, I wanted it to look like it was coming from this direction and filling this in. And then you add shadows, which is the purpose of these things. Now. There's also one other element to here, and that is the light that's on her. In other words, you know, you got light coming from this direction, but especially since she's wearing a, a white dress, but even if she wasn't, it's going to reflect the color of whatever is around her. So there's, there is, I wouldn't say it's coloring the light, but it's providing color on her from the surrounding areas. And so I, I painted some of those in to kind of blend her in better. It's very subtle, you use a very low opacity layer, but if, if it's not there you miss it and it, it just helps the whole, tie the whole thing together, I think. And then um, I added shadows. Which, oh, it looks kind of strong here, but this is before I put some of the textures and, and did an overall adjustment to it. So I kind of exaggerated it here got the direction, again it's coming from this direction, but she is going to cast somewhat of a shadow down here, uh, fainter, so I, I did that, and then you know, these layer, these texture layers I already had, so when I apply these, they lighten that shadow up considerably, especially this one here in screen mode. And then I apply the final desaturation adjustment, and that's basically the image. So, although, <clears throat> to be honest with you, that's the image in Photoshop, and then I, I do do some work in Lightroom, so to be fair, um, this is what it looks like in Lightroom. This is what it came over in, and then I have this preset uh, Mac Kozklowski did called Polo Ralph Lauren, which I really liked. Um, I, I really use this one a lot. And you can see basically what it does. Whoops, I'm off the... Basically, it messes with the white balance, and it does a vibrance and saturation adjustment also. It really desaturates it and adds some vibrance back. Now, to me, it's a little bit too bright, so I uh, did an exposure adjustment to, to get it to the final image. Because I did, I did want kind of a dark vignette type effect, kind of drawing you in the center and kind of adding to the mystery of it, and almost like there's a spotlight on it. That's the final image. I hope this was useful. It's again, I didn't go layer by layer through it, but just kind of a, an overview of the thought process that I went through.